<laughs> hey guys, so yeah, this is a new um, film today. I'm going to be doing a review on some, on the uh, La Mer powder brush that I recently picked up. Mm -hmm. I will actually be discussing this powder brush and the La Mer pressed powder today. So if you'd like to find out my thoughts on these two products, then please stick around. If you'd like to find out my thoughts on these two products, then please stick around. Please stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to Asana. Thank you so much for checking us out. And this today's video is going to go. Oh. She's behind the camera pulling faces at me like. <laughs> I see you. I see her. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Welcome back to Asa Now I'm here with my lovely director who is still pulling faces at me, Diane. She's in another video of mine, guys. If I put that one up first, please go check her out. She'd really appreciate it. She'd also like it if you commented about the fact that you saw her in the video. I know you would. I know you. So, trying to not let her distract me but I wanted to come on here to get I wanted to come on here today guys to do a video on a brush that I recently picked up and then also a powder that I've had for a couple of months now but I never did a review on the powder because I think I wanted to see how it worked with this brush so oh, thank you the brush is and wait where's the box comes out of this lovely, beautiful box. I love the packaging of these luxury items sometimes. And this is the La Mer Powder Brush, which is oh so soft. And the powder is of course the La Mer Powder. So translucent powder looks like this. This is translucent shade number two, and when you look at it visually, when you have them all laid out in front of you, it's actually the darkest of the three. I know some of you are thinking, whoa, a girl, that's kind of light. Yeah, it is, but it's a translucent powder. It shouldn't be leaving color on my face anyway. So let us first talk about the, the powder. So a few years ago, I did purchase the La Mer The Powder. Uh, this was $65 and it's, if it's not a glass bottle, it's a very heavy plastic bottle. This is to me my favorite, favorite powder, um, but it was discontinued. This, I mean, honestly, it was discontinued. They say they've come out with a better powder, but it is smaller in grams. This is a full 25 grams. I believe the new one is more like 20 grams. And the new one is also way, way, way much more expensive. So we'll stick with this for now. But I did want to bring it up and say La Mer has a loose powder that is amazing that I've spoken about before and that I love. However, this powder is not very transport friendly. So, yeah. So that's kind of what made me, when I saw the press powder, I thought, well, maybe that's what I need. Maybe this is what is missing from my life and it is pressed and it's much more travel friendly. So I did pick this up. Um, to be honest, I still think this is better. I still think I'm kind of learning how to use the pressed powder. I did learn a trick from a YouTuber here called, I believe, Puffin's Wife, and I'll link her channel down below, where she's talking about how you really need to um, buff, you know, and then buff it onto your skin when you use it. Press in, buff and press, buff and press, buff and press, like that. And since I've been using her technique, I do find that I love this even more, and it's actually a technique I'm using for my other powders. Um, I don't have a lot of pressed powders outside of the La Mer. I use the, oh, let me open it, the Chanel um, La Beige Healthy Glow Powder, and I also have one of the MAC powders, although it's not here, it's in the other room. Uh, but those are mainly the pressed powders that I use. Um, I think this press powder does match very well with the La Mer foundation and it's a really, really great combination. 
Um, guys, this it, this is really high end. It is. And it has the high-end luxury uh, luxury price point that goes with it. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be honest, I do enjoy using this. I do enjoy the portability of this and the fact that I can take it wherever I go. But this is still my favorite. Given a choice between the two where I'm at home doing my makeup, I will always reach for the loose uh, powder from La Mer over the pressed powder. So it's just something that I think about that as much as I like, I, I do like this one, I am more likely to get the loose one. Now this is also very finely milled and I'll show you guys, I'll, I'll do here and you can see the little wasp. Um, I don't know if you can see that, shake off. Okay, so it is very, very finely milled, very soft, um, it doesn't have a shimmer in it. It doesn't leave uh, a white cast. Although, although if I'm heavy-handed, which is where a brush like this comes into it, if I am heavy-handed, then it is more likely to get a little messy and to need a little bit more work to get through it. It doesn't leave color itself because it's the wrong color, but it does leave color if I use too much. So that is actually something that I will say about this um, pressed powder. Um, I... Oh, I forgot to say. There's only 10... Oh, save me Jesus. There's only 10 grams of powder in this product. And this cost more than this. So I paid way more for less than half. I never... I mean, I knew there was less because obviously it's, it's you know, pressed. There's going to be less. But I never knew how much less. Uh, the Chanel has 12 grams. So, the Chanel also costs way less. But anyway, you know, it's La Mer, and I get it. La Mer, you are paying for the price. You are paying, I mean, you are paying for the name, and you are paying for the uh, packaging and all of that. And also, they want to, they, meaning La Mer, wants to claim that you're paying for the Miracle Broth, because apparently, the Miracle Broth is enthused infused into this product. If you don't know what the Miracle Broth is, it's the product from La Mer that is the what makes all La Mer products apparently special. It is uh, infused with magnesium, copper, the sea kelp nutrients, you know, from the seaweed nutrients, all of that. It's all infused into their product line and it's part of what gives you the, the skincare benefits. I will say I like the idea of having it in the makeup products. Um, I like the idea. If the idea actually works that way, I don't know because makeup is supposed to sit on top of your skin and not go into your skin. So am I actually getting the skincare benefits? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, it makes for a great story and hey, I bought it so who knows, right? Right. So I definitely think that this particular type of brush and okay, so moving on to talk about the brush. The brush. Oh. The brush. The brush. Guys, this, this here, um, this I believe was $80. And this, oh gosh, I can't. It's the softest, softest brush. When, after I purchased this, I was at my local Neiman Marcus, and I went over and was playing at Tom Ford, and I got a chance to feel the big bronzer brush from Tom Ford, and I don't know, I don't know if it was because that was a tester brush, but it was scratchy, it, it just felt like it had been manhandled. And I'm kind of glad I got to try that because eventually all our brushes get manhandled, right? Like people say, well, you can't really compare it to the tester brush because that's been out there for a while. True. But this brush will eventually be out there for a while and I'll be using it and it will be out there for a while. So to me, it kind of made me think, wow, that's how the Tom Ford brush is going to end up. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know. I hope this brush doesn't end up like this. But I thought the La Mer brush was way more soft than the Tom Ford brush and it's it costs less so actually this costs less than this isn't that crazy I think that's crazy anyway so I absolutely love the size of the brush how huge it is and how absolutely soft it is look at that so soft 
And I love how it kind of goes back into shape. It feels very sturdy in the handle. And I haven't noticed anything, like sometimes when you do this with a brush, you see a, a one fall out. I haven't noticed any of that yet. So this brush, so happy. It's very well balanced. The handle isn't too long where it's unbalanced in your hand. So I'm not super dexterous where I can show you guys what I mean. But it's it's balanced. It's 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 just the right weight and the right thickness if, uh, in your hand, if that makes sense. So that's what I think about this brush. I do want to go ahead and compare this brush to other powder brushes in my collection. Powder brushes that are this type of powder brush um, or similar. I have here a Real Techniques brush. Um, I've had this for a long time. I probably purchased this. I don't know, this is probably about three or four years old, if not older. Um, it's Real Techniques. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but I know it was less than $20. I want to say less than $15. It's also very full. Um, and then again, bearing in mind how much older this one is, it's um, kept its shape and it looks really good, right? It's super soft. It's maintained itself. I wash it in the water. I haven't lost a lot of hair, although it, ugh, I haven't lost a lot of hairs, although there are a few stray hairs in it. So this is probably this is my least expensive powder brush. Oh wait, I didn't do this. Okay. So if you look at the two there, you see that they're both um, very dense. They both have a lot of hairs. This one has a much more circular dome to it, while this one kind of comes up. And it, it is a little bit more circular, but it's much more um, flat. So. If you press this down, you can get more of a flat area, which is why it's good for that buffing motion. Which is why it's good for that buffing motion. So, uh, and this obviously covers a much bigger area. Oh my gosh, my nose won't stop itching. Okay. Um, so now with these two, this is obviously a smaller head. Um, this is obviously a much smaller brush head than this one the fibers are shorter but this brush is super super dense compared to this one okay. so they they pick up powder actually in a very different way and I will say this I prefer this big brush on the loose powder I really do and this brush is actually, even though I know in the video I demonstrate myself using this brush um, in the powder, but for for when I'm using these powders on my regular day to day, I actually prefer this brush to this powder, um, and I'll tell you why. Because it, I feel like it picks up the powder much easier uh, than the other one does. Oh, sorry. No, can see that. While this one, because this one, because it is so much bigger, um, it picks up almost too much powder. Um, not a lot. You can still swirl it, but it 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 picks up a little a little too much powder. Maybe not bad. And obviously, I'm still going to use it. But um, I like the way when I'm if I'm looking to use the powder. A little bit more for um, shine control or all day wear or I want to look even just a tad bit more flawless then I think this brush is better um, and it just buffs into the skin so much so much better it gives a more um, it gives just a little bit more powder uh, coverage actually this brush I think if I used powder foundations this would be the brush I would use for that I, I, on all of them it really picks up powder no matter how finely milled really well. But this video is not a review on the Chikohuda brush, it's a review on the Lamea brush. Bring it back in. Um, yeah. Mm. So I, I did insert a clip, or maybe I'll insert it now, where you see me using this powder brush. Let me know what you think, guys. Um, I think a part of me really wanted to complete the trifecta so I could use the three of them together. Um, and get an idea of how they work together. I think they work really, really well together. I have no complaints. Um, 
you know, I feel like this was a, an expensive luxury uh, investment in my color um, additions, but I feel like it was a, a good one and one that has been getting a lot of use. I've been shaking this a bit, um, but I've already used quite a bit of this foundation. And when I actually use the three of these, it's it's fantastic, and I I I'm like okay, we're this close, we're really this close to finding a new holy grail foundation. But I still kind of like the um, Chanel a bit more because it's less money. Um, but luckily, you know, this should last a long time. The powder should last a long time. The foundation should last at least a year. So I'm good there. I love to use this with this powder too. I absolutely love it. So, so guys, um, I will add in the. I know I didn't talk about it because I'm not a hundred percent sure. Okay, I I didn't discuss it in the videos. Obviously, this is a synthetic brush, um, synthetic hairs. But I am actually <laughs> kind of embarrassed to admit I'm not too sure what kind of hairs these are. I will look it up and I'll add it down below. Um. And I think these are both synthetic, so I'll add that down below. Um, hey, if this is your budget, you can't go wrong. I used this brush for years before I tried anything else. But I will admit that once I got the Chikahudo probably two to three years ago, this hardly ever gets touched. It's this, this here is bay, And this is super bay. Uh, I love this ever since I bought it. It's fantastic. It's, it's really, really great. Um, this is, is still my ride or die, but now this I'm really using with the La Mer powder. If I'm using other powders or the loose powders, the, um, the Mer, La Mer press powder. If I'm using other powders, other loose powders, I'm much more likely to go with this one. It is fantastic. Um, and between the three, I think I'm set with powder brushes, although I have others, but there's really no need for anything else. So guys, here's a promise clip of me using the La Mer the brush powder. I'm using it with the La Mer powder. Um, I hope you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll check you guys out soon. Stay blessed, stay happy. Thank you. Bye.